Well, hello, America. Welcome to Common Sense. I'm Wendy Bell. You know, when I was 24, I landed this job on national TV in New York City, making $32,000 a year. After taxes, it came out to $1,600 a month, and my fifth floor walk up on the Upper East Side of Manhattan ate up half of that. With $800 left each month to cover my utilities and my food, I was broke. I was working full time, and I was broke. You never, ever forget the feeling of broke. Today, 30 years later, with out-of-control taxes, savings, stealing, inflation, and every cost feeling so out of control, I would likely be homeless in New York City, hoping for space in a shelter, overcrowded with strangers, my president and vice president welcomed here, flew here, and used my tax dollars to pay to be here. And the most insulting part of this purposeful bankrupting of our cities is when the leaders, so-called leaders of them, try to tell us how wonderful we are for being part of such a great American success story. You know, stealing the American dream from the people certainly is not success. And today we're going to talk some math because at least the numbers should not lie. Today's guests, they're all talk radio hosts from across America. You're going to love them. Welcome to Rich Valdez, the nationally syndicated host of Rich Valdez, America at Night on Westwood One, always looking sharp. Melanie Collette, host of Money Talk with Melanie on 98.7 The Coast, New Jersey. What's going on, Mel? And Chris Arps, co-host of the Tim Jones and Chris Arps show on News Talk St. Louis 101.9 and 94.1 FM. Chris, good to have you guys. Guys, all of you back. Thank you. you. You know, there's just there's just staggering dollars and cents data out right now about this migrant crisis, specifically in New York City. And Rich, this is why I want to start with you. Like since fiscal year 2023, which in New York started in July of 2022, all the way up through this past July, New York City taxpayers have shelled out. If you're ready for this. Five and a half billion dollars to house and feed, to give free medical care, and to clothe 212,000 illegal immigrants Joe Biden and Kamala Harris welcomed to America. Rich, 5.6 billion. Go. Yeah, well, I mean, where do we start, right? I mean, you've got so many people that need money. There's people all over the city. You can't go around the city and find uh, New Yorkers that will actually appreciate this. There's people complaining all over the city, whether because of the uh, Tren de Aragua uh, Venezuelan crime gang that's out there, or the fact that we're paying them to actually be here. The, bankrupting the city, Mayor Adams and his silly comments about, um, you know, they should be lifeguards because they're such good swimmers. I mean, the, the, you can't make this up. The comedy writes itself. And, and the saddest part, Wendy, is that really the people that are losing are us. We the people. Yeah, 100 percent. And Melanie, you're way better with math than I am. In 25 months, the Biden-Harris administration's open doors, their open border policies have cost New York City taxpayers $5.46 billion to manage 212,000 people who've come here illegally, broken our laws. That is $218 million every month, 600000 every day to support everybody except Americans. Is this, is this resonating with We the People, Mel? I hope that it is. You know, I'm coming to you from the studios in, in New York City and on the way in, I heard that Mayor Adams is looking for more housing. And I thought, well, I bet you are, sir. You're a sanctuary <laughs> city and you let all these people come into the city and now you're complaining about it when you were bragging about being a sanctuary city when you were running. And here is the thing. For the American people, for New Yorkers, the price of housing is going to go up significantly because they are driving up demand. And like you said earlier, going to bankrupt, probably going to bankrupt New York City and bankrupt the country uh, very soon if we don't change course. Right. And, and Chris, Eric Adams, the mayor there of New York City, says the drop in migrants being housed in shelters down to just 63,900 illegals now on any given night. Is this real New York City success story? Which is curious because he doesn't speak about the 4,000 people who sleep in the city's streets, subways and parks every night, which is the highest number since 2004, or the 60 percent surge in children since 2022 living in homeless shelters. I mean, when more than 30,000 kids, you guys, in one city don't have homes? Chris, is that a success I mean, story? That's not a success story at all. It's 63,000 people that are too many in the New York uh, area that are illegal. You know, not only are these illegal immigrants taxing the services in New York, like education, uh, these children are entitled to uh, an education. You have to hire bilingual teachers. You have to find the space mm -hmm. for them. We all know that uh, illegal immigrants use the emergency room as for, uh, for medical care, which is very, very, very expensive. And I saw some testimony that someone... Um, 
um, said before Congress recently that said that 59 percent of all illegal house, uh, head of household uh, families are on some type of public assistance. Uh, that is money that is American taxpayers have earned, and that money should be going towards American taxpayers, not people who have a disrespect for our country to come here illegally. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't doubt anything you just said. And you know the thing, Rich, the news, the news tells us the truth. They say the New York Times says the number of people living on the streets in New York City just hit a 20-year high. But wait a minute, wait for this. Migrants are not the reason. Uh, it's so insulting, Rich. <laughs> if migrants aren't the reason, then they're going to have to admit to their poor fiscal management and horrible way that they run the city. The reality is this is taxing people all over the place, with New York City being a sanctuary state. And listen, Eric Adams isn't, um, uh, he hasn't been blind to this. He's been out publicly saying that this is going to bankrupt the city. He said it himself in a press conference uh, four or five months ago. So this is a problem that he's well aware of. He knows what's going on. And uh, the bigger problem is he can't turn against his party. Now, he went down there and he met with Joe Biden and he tried to get more money and they tried to make a deal. Ultimately, they sent him packing because no Democrat can come against this uh, massive immigration movement that Joe Biden and uh, que mala eres, as I like to call her, which means how bad she is. Uh, this is a horrible thing that they've done and nobody can come against it. It's kind of like the defund the police, where if you went against that, you were kind of shunned and persona non grata in the Democrat right. party. And I think we're seeing the same thing with immigration. Yeah, you know, in the American tragedy in all of this, Melanie, homeless veterans, as sanctuary cities like New York City are overrun, the social services there stretched to the breaking point. The Big Apple has seen the largest spike in veteran homelessness in 12 years. This should be the big story. This is the great replacement. It's on so many levels, Melanie. It, it, it certainly should be. In fact, we shouldn't be inviting any guests into our home for free food and, and, and free amenities until every last veteran has a home, until every last veteran who has PTSD or, or some kind of mental illness due to their service and protection of our freedoms, until every last one of them is taken care of, we shouldn't be inviting any guests into the country, not to mention every single hungry child in America that exists today, American children that, that ha get these services as a birthright. They should be taken care of. You cannot afford to have guests into your home when you can't even take care of your own family. And that right is on. exactly what the, uh, the federal government is doing right now with these policies. Right. And Chris, in my last moment, I mean, honestly, do you really believe it's neck and neck? You really believe that Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are neck and neck when you've got these, these very obvious issues right in front of you? I don't think that the polls are neck and neck. I saw some, I uh, read something recently. Uh, the person that heads Kamala Harris's super PAC wrote that he, the poll, their internal polls were showing that she did not have this huge lead that all the other polls are showing. David Axelrod, who uh, I mm -hmm. listened to his podcast, uh, former Barack Obama uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, aide, he said that these polls are being heavily weighted towards Democrats because of right. their enthusiasm. And I also said this on my show, that with all of the free earned media that she has received over the last yes. six weeks, that for her to be tied with Donald Trump and ahead only through statistical, you know, the margins there, it's really tied. For her to only be tied in the, or a little bit above says a lot to me and says a lot about the strength of Donald right Trump's uh, campaign. What a great point. All right, guys, hang tight.